Good Friday. Obviously, it's the focus of the Christian message at Easter, Jesus' death on the cross, and his resurrection. The scripture says, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another. As God in Christ forgave you. Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children. And walk in love. As Christ loved us. And gave himself up for us. A fragrant offering. And sacrifice to God. Hmm. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. This reading, which I took from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, right the way to Ephesians 5, verse 2, finishes on that word, sacrifice. The word sacrifice has a, a far more familiar ring to it now in our current situation. It's coming back into currency. Uh, recently, there's been a huge emphasis on self, self-love. That's been the main emphasis, self, self-love. Now, sacrifice turns us away from self to others. And self-sacrifice, sacrifice is becoming a focus. Let me just read some headlines from a couple of stories coming in on our news feeds, Guardian Online, Express Online, and, and so forth. <laughs> he sacrificed himself. Who? It's talking about a French doctor. Then we have heroic OAP sacrifices herself. This is a 90-year-old woman from... Um, Belgium. Uh, and then, then there is a whole string of tweets. Doctor shares heartbreaking sacrifice she made to help those with coronavirus. And that story talks about how doctors are not just self-isolating with their families, they're separating from their families in order to enable them to continue to work. Doctors, nurses, care workers, social workers, and people who are on the front line in the key services in our nation. Um, uh, uh, fire, uh, ambulance, fire uh, service people, policemen, officers. They are separating from their families. So listen, listen to this. I'm a doctor. I'm about to separate from my family within my home for, question mark, how many months? So that I can keep treating you whilst trying to keep my family safe. It hurts. No hugs from my girls, no cuddles from my partner. Please socially distance now, she says, to make my sacrifice worth it. And then we have um, landlord's selfless act of kindness for tenant amid coronavirus uncertainty. So the, the, the doctor, the first medical doctor to die in France, did so as he came out of retirement and went to help people who were infected with the virus and possibly not properly protected. I don't know, but he lost his life as a sacrifice in that heroic deed. And... This is happening all over the world, in Britain as well. And so I, I, I'm grateful that the word sacrifice now is not a, a, a word which is a bit obscure and a bit unpleasant and unpalatable, but a kind of word that people don't want to talk about. We are seeing the power 
of sacrifice. And behind the power of sacrifice is the power of love. That's why I read that passage from the book of Ephesians. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Be imitators of God as beloved children. We are beloved by God. Therefore, we walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But what I did not read was the preceding verse, which begins like this. Let all bitterness and wrath, and anger, and clamor, and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. And this is the first influence of the Christian faith in people's hearts. Forgiveness is the climax here. And all those other words, kindness, tenderheartedness, these are positive words, positive qualities, beautiful and attractive qualities produced by the gospel. Kindness. It's a very simple word. Kindness. And the opposite is unkindness. Unkindness in your words. Unkindness in your criticism. Unkindness in your desire to hurt somebody. And, and we know that sometimes people who are hurting themselves, they come out with this unkindness and, and it doesn't excuse them. But we know that hurt people hurt people. And so when we hear somebody who is hurting others through their words, who is doing harm through their words, yes, they are wrong and ought to come back to the true, pure love that is found in Christ. But first of all, that they might be healed themselves, that they may then be able to give words of love. Whenever you hear somebody criticizing and slandering and be being destructive in their speech, not only is what they're doing wrong, it's not Christian, but it also may indicate that there is a deep hurt in their lives that they need to be healed. But if that's you today, you don't have to go any further because this passage tells us we walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. And that's the very first thing that we know about the crucifixion. We think about it as Jesus being rejected. I read earlier in the service how Pilate, Pilate washed his hands of the death of Jesus by, uh, because the crowd chose a murderer and a rebel, Barabbas. We read how that he, Jesus was mocked. He saved others. Why can't he save himself? And this is, this is something which goes to the very heart of us as, as human people. This is self-preservation. And it's a good instinct. And so is self-care a good instinct. And we can call this self-love. In other words, we take care of ourselves. As a, a friend of mine constantly reminds me, and he says, you know, you, you are giving and giving and giving yourself. Don't forget to take care of yourself. And reminds me of what is said when you travel in an aeroplane and there is the safety demonstration and, and the steward or stewardess, the flight attendant says, here we go. It, 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 this, is, this is the mask in, in the unlikely event of an emergency. And they demonstrate how to use it. And they say, make sure you put your own mask on before attending to somebody else. And that might sound selfish, but the truth is, if you're, own, if, you're, if you're not, if you don't have that for yourself, if your life is not uh, being taken care of, you can't care for other people. And so that's why it's so important for our health workers and those in the frontline care and critical care that they have the proper PPE, the personal protection equipment. That's why it's so important that we take whatever measure to protect ourselves. But there comes a moment when people will take a risk in order to, in love, help somebody take a personal risk. And there comes a moment when a choice is made. 
as that choice was made in Jesus' heart. The choice wasn't made on the cross when they said, prove that you're the son of God, come down from the cross. He saved others, how he can't save himself. You know, uh, this this was a provocative and it was bringing out the self-preservation. But Jesus had already made a decision that he would give his life up as a ransom and as a sacrifice for the sins of the world. And if he did not do that, we would all remain dead in our sins. I'm so glad that Jesus said yes to the father. I'm so glad that God was in Christ reconciling us to himself. I'm so glad that God in Christ is able to forgive us. And it was all because of Jesus' sacrifice. Now, there is another story of sacrifice, which is a very poignant story. It's the story of an Italian parish priest who died of coronavirus. This, this man was 72 years of age. And his name was uh, Don, Father Don Giuseppe. And uh, he, he uh, contracted the virus and, and uh, he, he passed away on March the 15th, not, not so very long ago, quite early into our own lockdown here in the UK. And, uh, and the story is of this priest was contracted the virus and complications in breathing, difficulty in breathing, and the parish clubbed together to buy him a ventilator to keep him alive. And he'd been a priest for 47 years and a, a very loving, a real father figure, a real father figure, not just a father by virtue of priesthood, but a real father who cared. And one young man, that he heard of, contracted the virus and had no ventilator. And this young man was a stranger to the priest. He had no idea who he was. But the priest voluntarily chose to be taken off his ventilator and for that ventilator to be given to somebody else. The priest died but the young person lived. Now, I, I'm not wanting to tell these stories to say, to sort of say an, an old priest shouldn't live and, uh, and so on. It's not about uh, whose life is more valuable than other people. It's, that's, it's, that's not the, di the discussion here. It is that anybody would choose to turn aside from the natural uh, self-preservation the natural love of life, the natural desire to cling on to life, which is part of our human makeup, part of our human uh, survival instinct, but for a greater purpose, a greater love. As the Bible says, there is no greater love than a man lay down his life for his friends. And that quotation from John chapter 15 was published on social media and in the publications as a reference to that priest's Christ-like activity. Now, in so many ways, we may not be called to make that ultimate sacrifice uh, here on, you know, in, even in this crisis even, but we are called to make little sacrifices, the sacrifice of staying indoors, the sacrifice of putting up with people in your household, a present company excluded here in my household. But there are people who are thrown together, sometimes parents and children and husbands and wives who, who are struggling in their relationship. And for them, it is an absolute nightmare. And we pray for them that they could be reconciled. And the reconciling love can come through Jesus Christ. I, I know of a pastor who was invited uh, to go on a cruise with a fellow pastor. And he said, we're going to go on this cruise. Would you like to join us, your wife and my wife and, 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 and you and me? So you, me and my wife, you and your wife. And the pastor looked and he said, uh, I know what that cruise is. And he said, you 
and me shut in together with our wives in that small cabin for three weeks. That is a cruise ship from hell. And I mean, I don't know if it was speaking in irony. And actually, uh, two of that, um, that one of the couples were having huge marriage difficulties. And you can't just pretend that being secluded together is the solution. No, the solution is coming back to Jesus and allowing the, the knowledge of Jesus' love to be poured out in your heart that you might be reconciled. When God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, it, he, was, he was reconciling us to each other. This is reconciliation of husband to wife, of wife to husband, parents to children, children to parents, enemies and friends. Members in the body of Christ should not be at loggerheads with one another. We are reconciled by the blood of Jesus Christ. So let us put aside all wrangling and disorder and, and even that stuff which comes out of anxiety and personal hurt and allow the love of God to be poured afresh in our heart. As the Bible says, let get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, slander, as well as all types of malice and evil behavior. And so there we have the beautiful and the attractive. What the gospel produces, kindness, tenderness, forgiveness, tenderheartedness. That's the opposite of hardheartedness. Niceness, that's the opposite of nasty. Well, kindness, actually nice. I don't like nice and nasty. Nice is, I don't want to be nice, but kind is better. Kind is the opposite of nasty. Let's uh, get rid of all nastiness in our hearts and spirits. So say, why are you talking about this on Good Friday? Very simply, it's in our text. It's in our text. And if the Apostle Paul 2,000 years ago in the very early church where they were in living memory of the things that happened on the cross and the resurrection, if that generation needed to be reminded that they had to be shaped by the love of God, how much more should the church in the 21st century which in many ways, I'm speaking generally, has gone so far away from the simplicity that there is in Christ. And one of the beautiful things about the isolation of coronavirus, uh, and there's ugly things about it, it's very difficult, but one of the beautiful things is it's reminding uh, how us, how we need to be shut in with God in the secret place and to long for fellowship with others in the public place, the place of fellowship. And so this is like a a reformation that has hit the church over the last three weeks. More work has been done by the Holy Spirit in the hearts of people now who are more tender-hearted towards God, who are more open to God that I can remember in the three years of preparation that God led us through in order to come to the 2020s in Kensington Temple, London City Church. This could be the moment where God breaks through in the church of Jesus Christ. And we realize that the temples are empty, the churches are empty, but God is with us. Why the church is empty? Because we're unable to meet. But the church is not building. The church is not even meetings in buildings. The church is a 24-7, seven day a week, 365 out of 365 each day of every year, a gathering unto Jesus and unto other, unto one another in love, forgiveness, relationship, because we are loved by God. What a wonderful, wonderful verse. Walk in love. <laughs> How can we do that? It says be imitators of God. God's a God of love, so should we be love, uh, lovers for God? Well, how does it happen? Well, we are his beloved children. Have you truly received the love of God? Have you truly received the love of God? If you have truly received the love of God, you will be not just a lover of God, but you will walk in love and kindness, tenderheartedness. And yes, forgiveness will flow from your heart. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. Now, I think in many, many ways, what I've had to say today is, is understandable because we see examples of sacrifice and we know that love obviously is on the side of forgiveness and on the side of kindness and tenderheartedness. But there is something here which is not just 
about our human relationships, the way that we should behave to one another, and the way that God has accepted us by his love, there is something about this sacrifice of Jesus which makes it absolutely and utterly unique. Romans 5 verse 8 says, God commends his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In other words, he says, look, if there's a good man and you give your life, that, that's thing, but you wouldn't give your life for your enemy, not normally. But Jesus gave his life for the very people who were crucifying him, mocking him. And these were the religious authorities of the day. Don't think that religion is always on the side of God. Don't think that. Anybody who's got any observation powers will be able to see that sometimes religion is on the opposite side of God. It can be the most unkind, unloving, intolerant, and unforgiving manifestation of institutional organizations on this planet. That's why so many people have lost faith in the institutional church. Well, we're not like that in KTLCC because we know the church is not an institution. We know that the church is an organic spiritual relationship with one another, relationships which are forged by the blood of Jesus Christ, as we are sharing today, and by the Holy Spirit. So, yes, it's it's much more than a religion. And, and, uh, and the religious people were rejecting of Jesus, and he forgave them. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And, and he reached out to them. He died for them. He died for the soldiers who were executing. He died for the religious leaders who were highly responsible for bringing him to that place. He died for the, those who accused him falsely, the false charges that were made against him. He died for those who slandered and cursed his name while they called for a murderer and a rebel to be um, uh, released in his place. What is this all about? There is an expression, to err is human, to forgive is divine. That's not a strictly Bible expression, but it's a good saying. To err is human, to forgive is divine. If we're talking about receiving divine forgiveness, we have to start and recognize the fact, start by recognizing the fact that we need it. The Bible says all have sinned, and that's why we need to be reconciled to God. And because of our sin, there is a righteous reaction. God's offense, so he is offended by sin. He is too pure to even look on it. He has to deal with it. He is not just the God of love. He's the God of justice. And if there is any true love in the world, it will uphold justice. Justice and love are two sides of the same coin. Anybody that's got children and you treat children with favoritism, you know it's not loving. You know it's not fair. If there is no justice, love and justice are two sides. They're often contrasted, but they are tightly connected and related. So Jesus giving of, him, of himself was a sign of love. He died for us. That's true. It was a sign of his, his willingness to self-sacrifice rather than to pursue his own interests. It was a willing death on the cross. He surrendered himself willingly. Nobody took his life from him. Jesus said, no one takes my life from me. I lay it down of my accord. And if I lay it down, I will take it up again. So this was, he was not forced into this. This was not an unwilling Jesus being beaten to death as the substitute, uh, 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 receiving the substitute penalty that was due other people. This was not a cruel taskmaster taking it out on Jesus because he couldn't get to us. No, Jesus voluntarily said, Father, I, I accept to be the sacrifice of for the sins of the world I accept to stand in the sinner's place just exactly as he did with Barabbas. 
Did you hear that earlier? The crowd called Pilate to release Barabbas, who was a murderer and a rebel. He was a true rebel, insurrection, rebelling against the rulers of the day. A murderer and a rebel. And you can truly say that Jesus died in the place of Barabbas. I mean, literally, it was either Barabbas or him. The crowd wanted Barabbas, so Jesus took Barabbas's place. And that means also not just for Barabbas, Jesus took your place. You might say, well, I'm not a murderer, but every unkind word is a word, an action equivalent of murder. You might not say I'm a rebel. Okay, I disagree with the government. That doesn't make me a rebel. No, this rebellion is not against human government. This rebellion is against divine government, who is the ultimate ruler, the only creator, the unique, eternal, uncreated God, who is the ruler and who is not just the promise keeper, but he is the law giver and the law keeper. And he has got to settle the scores to bring justice about because he's a God of fairness and justice and love and God's justice would have condemned us to death. But Jesus' love stepped in the way so that God's justice could come to Jesus instead of us, that we might receive the forgiveness of God provided by the love of Jesus. So what is this saying? This saying is that Jesus is saying that Jesus' death was willing. It was sacrificial for the sake of others, but it was also sacrificial for the sake of God. He offered it up to God, as the Bible says. He offered himself as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Often Old Testament ceremonial sacrifices and presentations to God had to do with sweet smelling things offered with very specially uh, constructed a very specially a very special compound of herbs and spices sweet smelling fragrance and the idea was was as the offerings were made with sweet smelling fragrance it was like saying lord please look on this sacrifice and let it be a sweet smelling acceptable sacrifice and we know that it was why? Because Jesus didn't remain on the cross. He was crucified. He was laid in a grave. But on the third day, God raised him from the dead and said, I will not allow my Holy One to see corruption. God vindicated Jesus. God declared him to be his son, the powerful son of God and manifested him to the world as the son of God in the resurrection. And now he has made him both Lord and Christ over Israel and the nations and every individual who is prepared to surrender to him and say, Lord, I receive your love. And so God would have us today walk in love, be imitators of God, knowing that we are recipients of God's love and that we too can serve him and serve others and if need be sacrifice painfully if necessary to show our love for God and for one another now I encourage you to respond to this message please do so and I know people have been responding I'm hearing that there are hearts going out on on Facebook and and so forth but if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you want to talk some more about this, please call our pastoral hotline 020-7908-1700. Or alternatively, you can text to 07570-261697. Or you can interact on Facebook um, and, uh, and then you can also interact online with the online response that comes from the same page, the home page of KTTV. But it's important that if you need Jesus in your life, that you receive him and you talk to them. You talk to people about that. And if you're ready to commit your life to Christ, do it now. And there are people waiting who are online and ready to help you with that.